All right. Hello, hello. Happy Thanksgiving, or happy post-Thanksgiving or whatever to everyone in America, and happy start of the week to everybody else, I guess. I don't like my frames dropping, but we're going to hope it smooths out. Ooh. It, like, literally dropped to zero. I hope these frames figure themselves out, because I have no idea why they're fucking up. But anyway, <clears throat> um, after hearing the ban list announcements today, we have decided that Modern's kind of a dumpster fire right now, and I'm going to be playing a bunch of Legacy to compensate, because... I do not enjoy playing Modern as much as I want to test for the RPTQ. I am mostly just going to wing it instead. Have I tried downloading my RAM? You know, I thought about that. It felt like when I, I went to the very, very legal and very legit RAM download websites, it felt like my computer slowed down. Also, they named their extra RAM download file virus.exe. It's super suspicious. But anyway, uh, we're playing some Legacy, because Legacy is a sweet format, where you can actually have meaningful interaction with your opponents. Um, I kind of wanted to figure out if I wanted Third Chalice in the sideboard as, like, my only real tweak to the deck over, like, Third Cataclysm. And with that comes a reevaluation of if I like Chalice in the Grixis matchup, which I've been kind of erring on the side of no, but... Like, maybe, especially if you're playing three. More suspicious than the Wi-Fi password at Eternal Weekend. <laughs> oh yeah, what was it? It was like, something, something. It was like some numbers, virus, something. Or no, maybe not virus. I forget what it was. That was a good password, though. But yeah, um, I know Phil's been a big proponent of three chalice for a while. And I haven't been as keen on it, mostly because I don't like it against Grixis, which is, I think, one of the big matchups he wants it for, is it's this card that comes in against combo and that can also come in against both Grixis and Miracles. <clears throat> but I have been noticing a lot more Storm recently, and I do kind of like the third Chalice for that matchup, in addition to Miracles, and then once we're at, like, three Chalices, maybe cutting the Moms in addition to, like, Revokers and Plows isn't a horrible sideboard plan for the Grixis matchup. Since Chalice and Mom do lar do largely similar things. Mom is weaker against removal, obviously. Chalice is a lot more tempo negative and is bad against K-Command, but I don't know. Maybe that needs, like, a reevaluation. I ne also need to kind of need to reevaluate where I'm at in that matchup. I need to do a Grixis test one day, and I think a Miracles test as well. Try to figure out why there's a discrepancy in my data. Oh, wait. Oh, shoot. I hope I didn't change that at all. I may have edited, like, my old data. I should really just delete my old data. Replace it with a new one, but oh well. Anyway, as my uh, frames keep dropping, which I don't love... Uh, we're just going to jump into another another league. Do I have a third chalice? Can I just try that right now? I don't think I want to. If I can spell chalice. I do, oh yeah, I have four chalices. Uh, I played... Uh, uh, I played... Spider Space's Dolly Stompy deck in Modern. As well as, I, I tried this, like, Ancient Tombs list with four chalices. So yeah, we have chalices. But, anyway, I think I'm just going to try this list again. Not, I'm not that confident that, like, Storm is a bad matchup. I don't think Storm is even that bad. I think it's, like, pretty close to even. I just don't enjoy losing to it all that often. Just because it's kind of not interesting to play the, the DNT vs. Legacy Storm matchup. It's very just arms race of, oh, do I live past turn two and can I, like, put a Thalia in play or a Chalice or something? 
versus the storm side is as soon as you identify your opponent's not on a force of will deck, you just like rev up the engine and like go as fast as possible. See, I think we're just gonna gonna roll with this list again, see kinda how it feels. Ooh, I like this hand, especially on the play. On the draw might be a little bit too slow, but on the play, we can use like these tools like port and wasteland to keep my opponent off stuff while we get to our our slower stuff. I wonder what my opponent is. Well, I'm horrified. Unless they just F6 through their turn. I guess we'll find out. If our manless treasure should be fine, we have this recruiter in the guard. For, like, um, the Remorseful Cleric. But Manless Treasure has to have a real bad hand to mull to six. I'm very scared. So this is Mantle's Dredge, I would assume, and they, like, cycled to find, like, a Dredger? Because Mantle's Dredge hates mulligans. I guess we'll just figure out what they discard. Oh, wow, yeah, it's not even a Dredger. <laughs> so we don't even need to go get a Recruiter yet. Or we don't need to get a remorseful cleric yet. <sighs> you can only play a recruiter though. Which is actually a little bit awkward. I do think they've already lost, though. They're just, like, super far behind. And yeah, let's just show them the main deck Remorseful Cleric. Maybe they'll concede. There we go. Yeah, it looks like it's just Mantle's Dredge, and they mold the 6, and then at, on Mantle's Dredge you have to have a really bad 7 to, to mold a 6, because you're literally just time-walking yourself, so they kept basically any 6. Could get Revoker to hide Cleric for Phantasm, and just Revoke Phantasmagor. They need to, like, top deck. I guess they could have had Phantasmagor in hand. They were just looking for a Dredger. I think they were just, like, super dead. I don't think hiding Remorseful Cleric is, like, super useful information. All right, Manalus sideboard time. Bring in these guys, cut all the slow shit. What do I cut in this matchup? Revoke. I like Revoker a little bit. Revoker is better because you can actually turn off their Phantasmagorians, right? Because, so you take the draw every time, because you get a time lock. You play a land, and then they move to discard, you play your second land, you can revoke. And you can watch them discard the faint hit. I, I guess you're too slow, right? Because by then they can ac actually activate it already. So never mind. Phantasmagorian does kind of suck in this match, right? It is, in fact, an activated ability, but it is too slow. Unless they, like, mill over Phantasmagorian later or something like that. I think I'd rather cut some of the, like, bullshit, like, Flicker Wisp, though. It just, like, doesn't do anything. If I'm recruiting, I'm just gonna grab Containment Priest or Remorse of Cleric or, like, Stoneforge Mystic and try to stay alive. Walking Ballista to break a bridge. I guess I could cut, like, Sword of Fire Nice as well. Keep it, like, one Wisp. This iteration seems okay. I 
I guess you can also name it like Street Wraith with a Revoker for what that's worth. It helps you like play around stuff if you're trying to surgical. Um, I think. Oh, this third recruiter. I'm crazy. Let's cut all the wisps again. I don't think I want Chalice in this matchup. Unless they have some secret zero drop that's good against me. They should be on like Sickening Shoal or whatever Contagion. If there aren't any removal spells. This hand is... Did I, did I click the play? Oh no, he, he, they got to choose. Right, I, I need to remember to click to take the draw. So we can play turn 2 Thalia, which is like reasonably potent, but I think we can afford to mulligan towards our hate a little bit. Because this deck is so much harder to beat the rest of these. Which card did I make, did I make up? But yeah, I think we can afford to mulligan towards our hate. Yeah, this hand is just turn two remorseful cleric, turn three recruit. So this is this is literally turn one vial, turn two cleric, turn three recruit, containment priest. Regards the removal. Oh no, yeah, contagion's a card that totally exists. Contagion slash sickening shoal. I want this path just as like insurance to clean up clean up the the dregs. Probably not. I want a guaranteed hit third land drop. So I can get Contain Freeze out. Remorseful Cleric. Unfortunately, this doesn't actually get to exile any of their dredgers. This does time lock them, though. Actually, no, because they have. They, I do get sort of some dredgers. Some dredgers, because I have to wait for them to discard to it. So this is actually just insane, right? Because if they discard to dredge, then they're, they can't discard for. Yeah, they're just dead. Remorseful Cleric just beats them. <laughs> I guess they, it doesn't just beat them, it just time locks them, like. A couple times? <laughs> Which, again, that's probably good enough, but yeah. Easy game, I guess. Legacy with play fun and interactive games. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's not interactive about casting a turn two remorseful cleric and then your opponent conceding? I do legitimately not understand. I guess like people building mana list dredge are just like trying to get into a legacy format and they want to build normal dredge. They're just like building into it. But mana list losing Gitaxi Pro is big game. Where even is mana list dredge on this list? There it is. Uh, we're on the draw, but double vile plow. I think I'm gonna keep this. I usually hate keeping like uh, vile in the draw hands, but like three castable spells, two of which are vile, is pretty good. City of Traitors. Oof. Gonna get super punished by this Chalice of the Void. Oof. Oof. Opponent did lead with City of Traitors, though, so there's a chance if we can rip, like, a land or two, like that, then we'd still be fine. 
Especially because it's like, if we were up in another land, we could like wasteland whatever they play after the city. Oh, did my internet die? No? I don't think my internet's dead. We should be good. Dropping an unreasonable amount of frames. I don't know. I don't know why. So I'm paranoid my thing's just gonna crash. Player files, a challenge to check him. Opponent's just on one land. Unfortunately, we need our other land, so we're just gonna go stoneforge up a batter skull and hope I don't get like top deck soul land into thought knotted. And then we draw a third land so we can like wasteland. Imagine how much farther ahead we would be if we were on the play this game. Oh uh, no! That was an endless one? Holy shit, we can definitely beat that. Now we really want to top deck a third land though, so we can wasteland here. Damn. We're just gonna put this in at sorcery speed. It's not gonna change anything. I'd have to move to discard otherwise, and like, I could discard like a vial because it's probably not relevant, but my opponent knows I have this batter skull, so. We really want to find a third land before they do, so we can just wasteland them. Yeah, this is totally fine. I can just race this. I don't need to block. Oh, jeez. Can my opponent stop hitting land drops? Can we start hitting land traps? So if I attack, they have to double block, and then we can get work towards, um, like, flicker wisping it eventually. I'm okay with taking both these guys off the table. If they want to double block. And if they just want to chump, that's fine too. Reveals matter shaper to matter shaper. Damn it. It's always the worst feeling. And we have Thali to block the reshaper. I bet you can, like, smash or me. This is fine. We'll go to 12. I don't love it, but... Can we just draw third land? I would love to find specifically a white source here. Oh, that's horrifying. I guess we're revoking GT because we can't beat that card. Depending on what my opponent has left over, at some point we can like double block this endless one, play a new revoker on their GTA. Man, if we just like had a vial on turn one, if we're on the play this game, it's just like completely in our favor. Uh oh, is it smashing time? And fuck, <laughs> we're so dead. Really wish I could have used this wasteland at any point in my life. I'm gonna free eat this, I think. All right. I've had enough. We had like I think three-ish turns to draw that land. 
which sucks, considering my opponent also <laughs> drew a bunch of lands in the time we needed to find one. That's life. So Eldrazi is a matchup that has been kind of cast aside in favor of, like, testing for these other matchups. Especially because my opponent's playing the... or, I guess, more likely playing the Stompy version. The post version is almost surely not playing GTA and sometimes doesn't even play cities. Yeah, that Chalice is really rough. And it sucks losing, like, the, the turn one Chalice hands because you're usually very good against those. Like, but not hitting the third land drop also made it just... We could have easily beaten a, beaten a Chalice, even with, like, three dead cards in our hand. As for sideboarding... I hate Ballista a little bit less when my opponent's on Mimics, but... Oh yeah, my opponent's on Mimics, so they're definitely just Stompy, they're not post. I think I hate... Th uh. Quality blocks a lot better than Ballista does, that's for sure. I think I like having access to a Ballista more than I like having access to, like, the fourth Thalia, because Thalia is not strong in this matchup at all. I guess there are a lot of not strong cards, though. Sanctum Prelate sucks. Is there a chance I'm supposed to board in third Recruiter? It's really slow, but... Maybe my like third recruiter might be better than fourth Thalia. I'm not missing anything on the sideboard, right? Yeah, these cards all suck. Yeah. Yeah. I'm waffling. Yeah, let's cut a Thalia. Thalia slows down GTA and Warping Whale. I do if they have Spatial. Yeah, it's usually like 1 to 2 GTA, and like, I'm not even sure if they're on, like, Warping Whales and stuff, if they're on the Stompy version. They're probably on, they're usually on Dismembers and such, but it's mostly because the thing, because Thalia's first strike is the big allure. I'm supposed to keep this hand. This hand looks like it sucks. Am I going to get a better hand? I guess probably. Something with Mana Denial, Stoneforge Mystic. This hand feels like it doesn't do anything. By the time this Jailer is relevant, my opponent's already smashing in my face or has thought not at it. Oh, this hand seems actually, like, weirdly better. It's really clunky and awkward, but... Just, like, don't have a creature until turn three. Hopefully my opponent doesn't have Chalice. This we can port on turn two, but I might want to play GTA. Wonder if I'm supposed to plow this mimic. I guess probably not, because I'm just gonna port. Then the following turn. I want at some point to leave up a, the plow on their thought not turn though. Which will be weird. I think we'll just sit on it for at least a turn, though. And just Rashad and Port. There's a chance I could have just went, like, GTA Crusader. Yeah, we'll feel out for what land they have, though. Like, if they don't have more soul lands. Might be able to try to gimp him more with this Rashad and Port, assuming we hit some more land drops. With this Aether Vial. I dig that. I think I will actually just develop this. We're not in any particular rush right now. And now I feel a little bit better about sitting on my hands. Next turn we'll be able to Rashad and Port and leave a Plow for a Thought Knot. Or eventually eat this mimic. Yeah, like this still doesn't play anything relevant. Might be time to stop porting, in all honesty. Hmm. 
I just like play GJ port. Maybe not. Maybe it's not time to stop porting. Because Mimic does hit hard if they get to like just smasher me. This Crusader can gum up the works. I think I do just need to leave a plow this turn though. I'm probably casting this plow even if they don't deploy another threat this turn. So next turn I can like start deploying. GTA Crusader casting Council's Judgment and stuff. So if they have Land Thought Knot, then we have the Plow. Yeah. I guess I shouldn't have six. I might draw like another removal spell. Nope. But having another creature is nice. We're gonna take a hefty chunk here though. Assume it's gonna be like GJ or Council's judgment here, right? They're probably working towards trying to a reality smash for me to to close the gap. because my opponent does have, like, kind of a decent enough decision ahead of them. I'm scared of the last four. They have so many cards in their hand still. It's really scary. Take the GTA, okay. So we're in it for, like, at least a little bit of a long haul here. Taking a chunk... Recruiter. I was really hoping this would be like a land. Because I don't want to counsel just one of these things, but I want to like cast a meaningful spell. I think it's just going to be Cast Crusader, have Cleric on the Vile. If they smush me, we have Crusader to block the Reshaper. We have Remorse for Cleric to chump block the Mimic. We can go to three. We can Council's Judgment the Smasher. And they're just left with a Mimic. Versus I also be able to, like, file a Recruiter. I don't hate that plan. Hopefully they don't just smush me. If they have, like, Endbringer, it's even less of a big deal because... They don't get like the haste trigger, and then we can, we, or they don't get the haste guy, and then we can count the judgment it. We just need to chump block the mimic. Recruiter lets me go find. All right, get you later, army. Recruiter lets me go find like stone forge or walking ballista. Oh god, this is this is just an uh, endless one. Oh, that's actually horrifying. It's not a good one to top deck. Or not a good one for my opponent to have. Hey, at least we got rid of it. I'm going to take this Mimic off the board. This does put us right in Smasher range. But I think my opponent definitely would have smashed me by now. Also, we can always chump block it if we need to. I'm likely just going to recruit a Flicker Wisp here anyway. I just don't want my opponent like drawing this card. If we get to recruit Wisp, we can like block the Reshaper and then Flicker my Recruiter. One, two, three. yeah, there are ways off of activating this eye. This 
So now we make a flicker wisp army. Put that. We can shoot up a jailer if we need to. A lot of options here. We can flicker out a reality smasher if we like absolutely need to. Yeah, if this is their plan, then we just block. And we flicker. Um, Reaper Quebec, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Right. I'm stabilizing here. Hopefully. See what the opponent has to follow this up. A land. Sure. Ratchet bomb, interesting. And STRGRV, thank you for the, the tier one sub. Thank you for the the support. Enjoy your emote. Enjoy your badge in the chat. I appreciate it. Alright, so my opponent has a ratchet bomb. What does that mean for me? I guess, like, we can always judgment it away. Am I just making an army? I think I am. Just, like, making a bunch of wisps. My opponent only has two cards in hand, and if the opponent starts taking this up to three, we can judgment it away. So for now, I think we're just gonna make a bunch of wisps. Ooh, Stoneforge. Maybe I'm supposed to play this instead of this. I was gonna cast Wisp on the Recruiter, and then get like another Wisp and just keep going. I guess I could do both, right? Courting them seems pretty irrelevant. So attack with both, Flicker Wisp the Recruiter, cast Stoneforge for Batter Skull. Recruiter comes back end step, get another Wisp. That seems pretty safe. Stupid Urborg made me click my basic lands. Great Batter Skull. Move to end step. Recruiter comes back. Opponent takes up the Ratchet Bomb. They can make me blow the thing, use the vial preemptively, but I think at that point it doesn't really matter. If they're just blowing it on one. Jeez, my connection is really spotty. I don't know why. Infinite flicker wisps. My opponent top decks a ballista. They can ballista for three, four if they have a soul end, so we're still not dead. Alright, what do you got, opponent? You need to close this game before my opponent finds ballistas. One. Oh, can they activate I now, actually? This might be bad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They can. And they can one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Close to me for four. It's actually really dangerous. I could always tutor a revoker for ballista if I need to. If they like pass this turn without doing anything, then we know what their plan is. 
but we need to be ready for both Smasher or Ballista. We're close to being able to just gain life and survive, but we can't do that this turn. We need to survive one more turn cycle. Okay, so they are just forcing my hand right now, which is fine. I guess I'm trading with this reshaper. I don't really want to. I could just flicker out the reshaper, but I think I just want to keep tutoring. Don't think I'm going to be blocking with this Stone Forge. Going to two seemed bad. I guess I'm just trading. It's going to suck if they like flip Soul Land and they have the Ballista in hand or something, but I think that's relatively unlikely. It also makes it so I stop having to worry about stuff. What's this going to hit? Simeon Spirit Guide, perfect. They could put it into play. Could make a 2-2. Two -two. Not nothing. Come on, cast a spell so I don't have to worry about you tutoring up an eye. Or tutoring up, like, a ballista with eye. Or a smusher. What am I recruiting? Does it have to be a revoker now? So we're just like so soft to uh to walking ballista here. And they're just passing the turn. I think it has to be Tutor for Revoker on Walking Ballista. Um, yeah, because they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 mana open. So they can tap I get Ballista and then Ballista for 4, which doesn't quite kill me, but like rats my board pretty heavily. So by getting a Revoker, I can revoke that. If they go get Smasher and cast it, we can put stuff in front of it and not just die. And then we'll have Batter Skull. Well, actually, they have Batter Skull this turn to block a Smasher, too. We'll have Council Judgment to beat, like, an Endbringer or something. I guess if they have, like, actual Ulamog in their, in their deck, we're pretty fucked, but that's just life. Typically, the Stompy lists don't have Ulamog, but Stompy lists don't also feature, like, double basic wastes that. Typically. So I'll have a 4-4 four, four here. I think I can afford to attack with both Wisps. Maybe just one Wisp. They have a 2-2 two, two to attack me. And we can't double block because the Stoneforge will be tapped. I'm not blocking with that for obvious reasons. Yeah, we'll attack with one Wisp. Alright. Hanging on them not having like a big dumb Eldrazi in their deck. Because if they have Ulamog, we're pretty fucked. They we're hoping their plan was Ballista. Because we can beat most other things.
Theater of Ulamog, I don't think there's a lot we could have done about it. By, like, recruiting a bunch of Wisps, we did try to to get onto the board as much as possible. We didn't, like, play a value game. Oh, Pitching Spirit Guide. We don't need that much mana. Maybe they don't realize it. Or maybe I miscounted. Oh, I did miscount. One, two, three, four, five, six, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did I miss them? Oh no, they just didn't take the two off that. Please don't be... Please don't be an Ulamog. We just, like, can't beat that. Please, like, we can beat Endbringers, or... Like, Thought Not Seer might... Eh, Thought Not Seer, we just have Batter Skull. And if they take the judgment, then we'll have Recruiter as leftovers. Yeah, this is fine. We can definitely beat that. But if they have another Soul Land, they can actually just play Thought Knot and I again, which is just really getting scary. Alright, take your pick. <clears throat> Got a couple of good ones here. Yeah, judgment makes sense. They do have a soul and shit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They can activate I again. But if their best card there was Thought Not, that means they don't have anything. Their plan was just like Ballista Me. Which means even if they start getting, like, Smashers, they can get Endbringer now, notably. We don't have an answer for it. I mean, we could recruit another Revoker. Or, um, Palace Jailer or something. I still have one Wisp left, right? Yeah. Ooh, Wasteland, that actually helps me a lot. We can just Wasteland the Psy. Put them to the test, see what they're going to go get right now, before I make my further decisions. you got? Endbringer? Smusher? Thought not? Something? Endbringer, okay. I think we just, like, have lethal before this Endbringer matters, too. We just, like, suit up the, the Flicker Wisp. The Batter Skull on a Wisp. Interesting, that's their block. Oh, did I ever play land? Oh yeah, I played the Wasteland. So I could use five mana to play replay Batter Skull. I could recruit something. I guess I shouldn't burn my time. We still actually do have a game three here. What am I going to die to, though? Umazawa's GTA is a card that I actually could, like, weirdly lose to.
GT up their spear guide. Because we have lethal on the board right now. We don't care about this end bringer. I guess like, grabbing a Thalia might be better than grabbing a Revoker if I'm scared of GT. Because Thalia just blocks the spear guide. Getting, I guess getting a second revoker is also better against like a random all is dust or something. Alright, I think we're good. I think we managed to finagle our way out of that one. It was very close. But hopefully we managed to manage to get out of that one. We just have lethal with, with wisps now. Suit up one with a batter skull. Yep, there we go. Whew. That was a good game. Just weathering those early beatdowns and trying to maneuver in in such a way that we can actually get there. Games like that make me want Cataclysm, but Cataclysm is so miserable against Stompy versus the post -var variants of this deck. They're just so much faster out of the gate, and you can't really, like, Cataclysm them when they have, like, a Smasher or an Endbringer or a Thought Not in play. It's just way too much damage. I think this configuration is pretty fine. Again, Ballista's pretty lackluster, but I do like having Ballista as, like, a counterplay to early... <clears throat> early Mimics that you don't want to burn actual removal on. Also, of note, they have... At least two basic wastes, so our paths get a little bit worse. Gotta be more careful with those. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, excuse me. Sorry about that. Yeesh. Am I supposed to keep this? It's got a wasteland. And a plow. Thalia. Thalia plus sword. The old Nambo. His hand's okay against a turn two thought knot. Am I getting a better six? Like again, a six with like a Stoneforge Mystic and an Aether Vial is probably better. I do like this hand because it has wasteland and removal though. We're gonna, we're gonna keep it. Ooh, a slow hand. Ooh, and we drew Stoneforge. Maximum reward. Through both their basic wastes. Also, they just can't really spyglass anything out of this hand. <laughs> spyglass name Wasteland, I guess. We're just gonna Stoneforge for Batter Skull, even if they go like Soul Land Slam Thought Knot. If they take the Batter Skull, then we have Plow, if they and we still have another equipment too. If they take the Plow, then again we just have Batter Skull, which is insane in this matchup. Yeah, they just named Wasteland. Makes sense. Ooh, double stone forges. Yeah, so they don't really have a good position here. Like second spyglass named Stoneforge. We still have like sword. We can go get GTA and stuff. Oh, just reshaper too. Yeah, they're super dead. Do I want to develop this vial or leave up plow this turn? They didn't have thought not, so I think I'm just gonna develop this either vial. And there's the eye. Smusher, sure. Don't really care about the smusher. I 
wonder if I should be concerned at all about dismember. Don't really think I want to go all in on this sword. For that reason, I could just like play equip sword, get him. Instead, I just think attacking fine, gaining four life. Let them like flip the reshaper thing. We have plow to deal with a smasher or possibly an endbringer or something down the line. Question is, do I want to play second Stoneforge, Thalia, Sword? A lot of options here. This attack is to sniff out Dismember, which I guess they don't have. Reveal Thought Mount. All right, that's definitely something to take note of. So now we can stack block the Smasher. We have Plow for a Thought Mod. The Stoneforge for GTA looks less appealing now. I think I would develop Sophie over these options. So we can just pass. Next turn we'll have Vial for A2 drop. They'll, they'll have to take probably the Stoneforge with the Thought Knot. So we'll have Vial for Thalia. So that resolves. Oh, I guess the Stoneforge does actually tap, doesn't it? So it can't block the Smusher. But if they attack, we're still just racing fine with the germs. I don't really care. I guess let's also figure out what we draw first. Ballista. Oh, oops, I forgot to click through that. Oh well. I was supposed to put in the sword there, now they might take it and kind of time walk me. That's me just like not thinking about the triggers. But even then, we're still okay. This means that they can't really attack. Yeah, they do take the sword. We can even like Ballista for two, Violin. Or just like. Probably Violin, Sword of Forge, grab, play, equip, GT. Something like that. Attack with the germ if they block. We have GTA to finish off the smasher. A leftover counter, five lands to re-equip batter skull to stuff. Seems fine. Five. Second Smasher. Neat. I wonder if they're just gonna pass. That would be interesting. Now they're just tagging with both. It's gonna suck if they have Dismember here. We take like eight. We still might be able to win. Oh, nice. They don't have dismember. Means we're totally fine. I suppose I could just pick up Batter School with this mana, right? Probably fine. We'll have five mana so we can redeploy it. Ooh, a path. So this means we can just cast Stoneforge for Gite, have Vile for Thalia, have Activation for Batter Skull, and have like Mana for Path. So that means cast Stoneforge, go with Gite. 
as the turn. They're getting close to like activate Eye of Ugin time, but tutoring up like a Ballista is a lot less good against a bunch of batter skulls. More smushing. That's fine, we have a path. Discarding this uh, Ballista probably. No attacks, interesting. Now I want to discard this Thalia. No more basics. Do have to be careful about my clock. I have six minutes though, should be plenty of time. Could judgment the spyglass and wasteland this eye of Ugin so we don't just die to it? It's so like bad for tempo though. I think we just want to get aggressive. They basically have to block, right? They're just super dead if they don't. Maybe keeping the Ballista over the Thalia was wrong. I was kind of hoping to draw a land, so I could like play and equip the GTA and uh... Run out. Oh, well this is fine. This is less fine because they have eye now. Hello cat. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They do have enough. Um, but we can just get GTA online, right? Council Judgment, up of GTA attack. I actually, just, oh, fuck, I'm thinking too long. I just need to close this game. I don't think they can tutor for anything scary enough for me to not be able to handle, considering we're just going to make a gigantic Stoneforge monster. Yeah, we should be fine here. Gonna use all these counters to kill this Endbringer, but... That's fine. They only have six mana, so they can't even, like, activate I to surprise blow, out, blow me out with something. 
as long as my internet doesn't like kick the bucket here. All right, I think we got it. They can tutor whatever. Well, we're at 32. They go to 6. They're almost just added to this ballista. They can't really realistically just tutor their own ballista. Oh, they do have an Ulamog. Surprising. Also horrifying. We... I think we still have lethal through a new mog. Yeah, we almost assuredly have lethal through a new mog. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They don't even have to use the tomb to cast it, but there's a chance of like leaving on port. I didn't play around right Ulamog because I didn't have it last game, but maybe they boarded it out on the draw, brought it on the play. Senior Mog is definitely scary. I think we still just win though. Starting Caracas and Batter School. Yeah, we just win. We have three three power attackers through Ulmog. Do I didn't even need to do that? If they block, they have to block this. No, I don't think I needed to do that fancy pump equip thing, but. Whew! That was down to the wire. Because then, like, this Ballista is not just a three power attacker, it just represents six damage. Also, represents even more because you can just pump it. I could have just made it a four four, and then if they block it, they take plenty. If they don't block it, it just kills them by itself. Yeah, I didn't have to do the fancy pump equip thing, but. If that was, like, just a 3-3, three, three, if that was a trained Armadon, I think the Pump Equip is the only way we get lethal. Otherwise, they block, like, one of my three power guys. They block the thing with the GTA, I guess. And they take four. But yeah, since it was Ballista, they were just dead either way. Where is Eldrazi Stompy? I'll queue into the, this next league while we wait, or while I try to find it. There's Eldrazi Post. I know I've played against it. There it is.
we lost game one. Yeah, we won game two and three. All right. Whew. <coughs> yeah. Sorry. Did I play that last turn differently? There were a couple of turns there that I like not I'm not sure if I made the right decision just based on time constraints and stuff. My time was ticking down, so I'm not sure if I should have like council's judgmented the um what was it called? The spyglass out of the way so I can like wasteland the eye so we don't get into that portion of the game. But with my previous with my previous knowledge, I think it was fine because I don't think they had anything like super scary to go get. Because I was playing around them going and grabbing like a ballista or a smasher or an, an endbringer. Not exactly Ulamog, which I think they were like a turn too late. The real question is though, if they had Ulamog in their deck, why did they go like cast the endbringer that turn? They had one turn that they could have activated it. They cast the second endbringer that turn. But if they had Ulamog in their deck, why didn't they just do that instead? Because they knew I could take the the and bring her off the board. So it's not like it accelerates anything. Like, it, it sticks around and, like, starts fogging something, because it, it was dead to the five GT counters. So why don't I just get Ulamog a turn earlier? Might have actually saved them. Trying to figure out if I could have played around that Ulamog better. If I like just cast the Ballista for two or something. Instead of three, I can activate Rashadenport. Rashadenport makes it so that they have to tap the Ancient Tomb to cast an Ulamog, but I'm not taking them off of the ability to cast it, ever. But it would make them tap it again, which would have put them to like four. Another four life. Well, I guess if I just had like Lethal through an Ulamog. The decision didn't matter a huge amount. <sighs> this, this legacy wait time. What's going on? Uh, Daniel Stallone one. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Now we continue to wait. I'm just gonna look at my deck. I've got I got reformatted. I think I've been happy with most things going on with this list. The only spot that's really in flux and continues to be in flux is this like third cataclysm, which could be like it was a mirror crusader at some point because I was trying to hedge for like the death shadow matchup. Like it could be a third chalice still to hedge for like storm and stuff. Uh, we're two zero right now, dark view, waiting on this like very long legacy load time. We beat manless dredge and then we just beat Eldrazi Snob being a really tight match. Gideon for third kata. Yeah, there's, there's a chance like I can play like the singleton Gideon. As a card that's reasonable for shadow, and it's like less It's like less high impact on cataclysm, but comes in versus some of the like the more weird mid-rangey matchups. Alright, we'll on the die roll. I think on the play, this hand is like good enough. It's borderline. It's like really clunky, but I think like my turn one to two curve is just so good against enough of the format that I want to keep this. I'm 
then we're against like Eldrazi Stompy and my Mother of Runes Double Thalia Hand is just the worst. Hey, Misty Rainforest X. We get to do stuff against that. Preordain. One top, one bottom. Storm. Alright, well, just putting it on the table. Storm. I'm just gonna slam this Thalia and be pretty happy that we're in game one against Storm. Technically don't know if it's Tess or not. So I don't know if I want to attack with this mob. I'm not sure if it's worth the one damage. I'm gonna err on no. I guess Tess, even Tess would be hard pressed to hit a Thalia. They'd have to like Burning Wish. They need like three mana to Burning Wish. Yeah, I'm gonna attack with this mom. Plus we have like second Thalia. What are they gonna do? Bounce it and then or kill it and also go off in the same turn. Two Gideon and one Kata, but that was before casting my first cat. Yeah. Cataclysm's a hell of a drug, that's for sure. I think people need to stop sleeping on that card. Thoughtseize, alright. Thoughtseize my recruiter, I assume. Thoughtseizing second thought is pretty relevant, yeah. Prevents us from going and getting like prelate to seal the deal. Or revoker or something. I think we're just going to start porting their island rather than uh, casting this mom here. I could buy Gideon over third Cataclysm, maybe. Just haven't, haven't been high on Gideon in a long time. Just so much weaker than Cataclysm is against Grixis and Miracles, and just like stone terrible against Post. But it does like do things that Cataclysm doesn't like be relevant against Shadow. And some other deck random decks where Cataclysm's bad. Alright, you got me opponent. So I play Stoneforge this turn. I don't have a risk of, like, if you give it the storm put enough time, they can go off through with Thalia. It's tough, but they only have four cards left in hand. I think we can reliably Stoneforge. Just go get Batter Skull. In case of like random empty the warrens, I think third child songs are very much ready hedging against dread. Are we com? Oh, we're comparing it to Gideon. Okay, yeah. I'm the only my only hiccup on the third chalice is I'm not sold on it versus Grixis. It might be worth retesting because I just like don't love it versus Grixis. I'm not sure if the third. I think the third chalice makes my opinion of it like slightly better in the Grixis scenario. Because, like, cutting all your mobs for two chalices doesn't feel very good, but cutting them for three chalices was probably a little bit better. I need to, like, retest the Grixis matchup and how I feel about Chalice of the Void in that matchup, specifically. And also, I'm not, like... Chalice is very hit or miss against Death Shadow. It's really good against, like, their... It, it's like, when it's good, it's really good, but there are a lot of times where it can be really clunky and awkward. I guess the same is kind of true for Gideon. Helps soak up cake. It just feels, like, very tempo negative, which is why I don't really like it. It's really bad if you don't have, like, Vile starts against Rixus, because you just spend your turn your turn two playing something that doesn't attack or block. Whereas, like, your mom and Athalia curves are really good against Grixis, in, con in conjunction with some mana denial. I 
All right, so we can just present lethal without batter skulling here. We should attack for four, play mom port, and then attack for five next turn. So we should be fine. I'm a little scared of like some random main deck bounce spell, but I feel like I shouldn't be. I could just attack for two, not port them, put them to seven, put in batter skull, and then have lethal next turn. What's more likely, though? The one mana mattering, or them having, like, a main deck bounce spell? There's, like, no one that plays main deck bounce spells. Port the swamp, cut them off of a color. Cast Rain of Filth. All right, opponent, trying to go off. They definitely have a decent amount of mana here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What the? All right. Well, we did as much as we could. Let's see if they can go off. Bastard Flames? Is this lethal? Wait, no, they can't do anything with that, right? There's no tutor? Yeah, <laughs> this is just concession. They had, even if they had Infernal Tutor, they cast Bastard Flames, they had two mana left. They Dark Rit up to three mana. Yeah, okay, they couldn't even do anything. They couldn't do anything even with... Uh, like, if they discarded an Infernal Tutor to that, we were still fine. Cool. Like I said, very hard for them to beat Athalia. Not impossible. Usually it involves a lot of Cabal Rituals. But if you give them enough time, they can eventually, like, sculpt a hand that can beat it. So you do want to just try... Once you have Athalia in play, game one, you just want to kill them as fast as possible. Like, none of your other cards really matter. You just want to get as much power in play every turn as you can. These guys, cut Jailer, cut Gite, cut Spirit Keeper, cut Plows. Is that how we usually do it? This Ballista could still be cut. Don't love bringing Council Judgment in this matchup, unless I know they're on. Um, whatever that's called. Dread of Night, especially if we're up a game. If you're down a game, it's more likely to try to hedge to like not lose to something, I think. But being up a game, I think we can wait and see if they have Dread of Knights. Because the question is, is, is are these cards better than like, like a Ballista and a Wisp? Which the answer is like, these cards are probably better. But it feels so bad to draw them when you, when you do need to clock your opponent out eventually. Meh. It's like very minor distinctions, I think. It's probably fine either way, honestly. Don't think Surgical Rest in Peace is like a snap keep against Ant here. The same though, like Athalia, obviously be great. I think we can afford a Morgan to six though. All right, we'll just keep this and and die. Nambo keep anyway. Yeah, like it is. It is not like threatening enough. I don't really care that Surgical and Recipes is a Nambo. It just like doesn't do enough when we can Morgan for our stronger hate. It's also because we're on one land. We can't even guarantee to like snap off the rip on two. I think the sand is probably better. Especially with that revoker on top for additional stuff, assuming they just like thought sees this following in the first couple of turns. Basic swamp thought sees. Basic swamp dread of night. Alright, well, we have two things that are better against dread of night. Also, we boarded in our council's judgments. Okay. 
Definitely not nothing. Go get him, Phyrexian Revoker. Oh, ho, ho. God. Now I have to play the game of what number do I freaking put Prelate on in this matchup. I feel like the answer might be two if they're on Dread of Knights. Because they're not on, uh... Massacres. I should have played around... Uh, I guess I didn't need to play around Massacre. They played Dread. But I could have played, like, Crocus Port to play around it. It's too late now. Let's just revoke their LED. Could put it on one, I suppose, as well. One or two, I think, is probably the answer with Sigdom Prelate. Um, Lion's Eye Diamond. Yeah, I don't really know why Storm players, some Storm players, like Dread of Night over Massacre. Maybe it's because. People start shifting towards uh, Chalice over Ether Sworn, so they don't like have the X2s to deal with as much, but they're still Prelate, which is really scary. Hopefully they can't just like kill me here. They did kept double top. Alright, now comes the question. What number do I put Prelate on? The answer's gotta be like one or two. I feel like it's never four unless they're on Massacre, in which four can be okay, but they're on Dread of Night. They don't want Massacres. Uh, I guess the, yeah, I guess board space, sideboard space is, uh, is a factor. So one beats like Chain of Vapor, two, we saw, uh, we saw the Tropical Island, so they could be on, uh, Uh, they could be on Abrupt Decays, so like two beats Abrupt Decays and Echoing Truths and stuff. And also turns off like, uh, Infernal Tutors and such. But the Infernal Tutors are weaker because we already have LED on Diamond. One turns them off of their cantrips to find that stuff, though. I feel like one might be okay. Also turns them off of Second Dread of Night to kill my Sanctum Prelate outright. I don't hate one, but I don't love it. I never know what to put Psychic Roll on. There's so many, like, different options. There's one, two, and four. There aren't that many different options, but you guys get what I mean. Alright, well, not fetching the green source. I feel like I want to put it on one. One's typically the strongest, I think. It just turns off, like, the, the highest quantity of cards in their deck. Oh yeah, it is worse. It's definitely worse with Adnos. That's that's true. Dread Knight is much better Adnos card. I have beaten uh, have beaten Storm opponents that just hit like empty Dark Petition, Past in Flames, uh, Tendrils, Massacre, or whatever. Yeah, two takes them off of Infernal Tutor. Well, they yeah they have reactionary spells. Whatever I play, so. I think I'm going to recruit Leonin Relic Order. Alternatively, I could just play Stoneforge and port them, but they have a lot of lands. I think I want to try to get Thalian to play. Goodbye, Relic. Goodbye, Recruiter. Oh, I also can't play the vial because I have my thing on one. Um, we on a relic order. This ups my clock. Oof. Ah, oh, an echoing truth, man. Never lucky. Never the right name. 
Well, they could have easily just had, like, Chain of Vapor, so there's no point. Oh, okay, they also had Fatal Push. There was no correct name. This at least puts Prelate back in my hand, so I can recast it later. But this also means we might die. We only have three cards in hand. Maybe we don't die. This feels like the we're going for it, though. Like, this is just going to be, like, a land LED Adnaz or something. This is the this is the make it or break it turn. Also, Fatal Push and Dread of Night and Echoing Truth. That's a lot of a lot of cards. I guess they have like a lot of junk, duress, and stuff. Yeah, or Dread of Night. Dread of Night number two is like kind of my scariest thing. I don't know. We're this seems very bad for me. Jesus. That was a real good brainstorm, I guess. Are we deterministically dead here? They have a ton of mana. But I feel like this... It has to be an Adnaz still, right? Because they have double LED as their mana producers. They like crack for triple blue and past in flames, maybe? They have a lot of cantrips. And their Adnaz is just not very good at 11 life. Have more removal in our board than cards to take out for this matchup. Yeah, there's a lot of like good cards against TNT. Oh, get the, oh yeah, they can just like inf they can just tutor chain. They do have enough mana, right? Storm up to. Oh, they get double tutor in the yard. Cabal rat. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll just watch. They get like infernal tutor for LED here. Or any anything. Because now we're. Any mana producer to get them back up here. Well, I don't think there was like a different line where we could have uh, done a lot. We did, yeah. I feel like we did most things. Like the turns that they're relevant. Our, our relevant decisions were made. We The one turn all we had was, like, Recruiter for Relic Order and then pass. And, like, playing a Stone for Tears isn't going to, like, save me. Oh, yeah. We get we get to play good formats, though, Caleb. Yeah, I think we just run it back and then we're, we're on the play this time, so we're a lot better off. Notably, they are on... Whatever it is, Dread of Night. So, bringing in Council Judgment is justified. Yeah, we just run this back. And be wary of, of keeps that are bad against Dread of Night. And probably have to keep them anyway. Like, if my hand is two Thalias. Some other garbage. And go to Recruiter. You could have... I didn't have five lands, though, so I couldn't have cast the second Remoker that turn anyway. Because that was my turn four. Ooh, this hand's pretty good. We got Ch Chalice, plus File. I mean, other than that, it's not very good. I think this is keepable, though. We just have, like, Chalice on zero, land, Vile. Other land, other Vile, Mom. Relic Order for... Trevor Knight. Is this keepable? Chalice on zero isn't, like, gonna win me the game, and this hand doesn't really have a plan to win the game. I kind of hate it after I think about it more. Like, Chalice on Zero is typically your your stopgap towards your actual cards, like Sanctum Prelate and Thalia. And this hand doesn't do anything after I Chalice on Zero my opponent. It, like, doesn't present an adequate clock. It's, like, borderline, though. But they did show... I guess they showed Dread of Night and Fatal Push. They don't actually have that many answers to this chalice, I don't think, outside of, like, their Echoing Truths. You know, let's try it for science. Let's see how good chalice is. I don't think I would keep this in, like, a tournament match, but I like to experiment with hands. You don't get to learn if you don't ever keep these hands, right? Uh, 
Better Skull's already a 6. If you keep it, might be worth Chalice one. I guess maybe there's a chance, like, don't play... Uh, if I don't play the Chalice out now, though, I can get Thought Seized, which isn't great. But yeah. It's a 6, but it's definitely, like, a keepable 6. It's a pretty good 6 at that, yeah. They just, like, Thought Seized this Relic where and my hand is just very bad. Yeah, we might not draw the land. Time to mom for mom to get her beatdowns on. Yeah, I've seen people bring in Hercules as well, but it feels like, what? How many things can you possibly come in this matchup at that point? Wow, well, take the mom. I guess they're prepping for like an inevitable, like an eventual Thalia or Prelate or Revoker or something. Yeah, got him. Never didn't have it. Stop having basics. These dang storm players. I think I'm just attacking with this Mother of Runes. I, I do need to just pressure them more than I care about having an active mom. I'm drawing up planes doesn't really do do anything. This board stage right now is better than Yeah, for sure. I mean, I guess not with a really loud and relic word in my hand, but in general. Like, the lasting effect, it makes it different than Massacre, but also, like, you wouldn't need to Massacre right now. You could just sit there and hold on to it, but at the same time, just being able to deploy Dread of Night and forget about it is... Like, there are definitely upsides to both. One is not, like, just slam dunk better than the other by any by any stretch of the imagination. Really wish I had a chalice on one, obviously. I hope we're not dead. I always get nervous when my opponent taps their basic swamps. Uh-oh. Chain of Vapor, huh? I can't really... S Wait, hang on. This doesn't work how I want it to, right? Because if I... Leona Relic order my own Chalice, then the spell gets countered, so I can't copy it. I don't think... Don't I don't think there's a way here that, like, I can Leona Relic order this thing back into play because of how Chain of Vapor is worded. I can counter it, but if I counter it by Relic warding it out, then I don't get to copy. And if I copy, it's worded such that the card is bounced and then I get to sack land and copy it. So yeah, I, I can't do anything about this. Just let it get bounced and hope. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm not gonna sack a land. I'm just like getting up storm count, I guess. Oh, they needed a threshold. Oh, Those are just add nons with LED. Oh, is this determinist? Oh yeah, this is this is pretty lethal. Right? They have two rituals and they can just tendrils me. Dang, they got me. Don't think we had a lot going for us that could have actually beaten all that though. Thought sees chain of vapor fatal push. 
They did Chain of Vapor too. So they have Chain of Vapor, Echoing Truth, Fatal Push, Dread of Night. That's so much stuff. It feels like that's just a lot. I never know what Stormboard's out, but I'm not, I'm not an expert Storm player or anything. They probably can like shave cantrips and whatever, cut all their dresses. Like, if we had, like, mold that mediocre 7 into, like, something that had a Thalia, they can Thought Seize the Thalia, or any other 2-drop that we have. So, like, so Chalice's big game against their turn 1 Thought Seize. I mean, if we have, like, a hand with multiple Thalias, then they have, like, the Chain of Vapor Fatal Push after that. Eh, can't win them all. But another argument for, like, adding the, adding the third Chalice, because there's, uh, more Storm popping up, and the storm matchup is a little, is pretty tight. Definitely, if you want to hedge hedge it a little bit more, then you can play the third chalice. Minus four to rest, minus one pass flip, minus one push man, bring it in. Plus three echo, plus one chain, plus one push, plus one empty. Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They playing like two past in flames main deck. I don't. I don't know things about storm. But yeah, shaving cantrips makes sense. Oh, I need to record that match. Ten twenty three. Is that twelve wins? We won game one, and then lost games two and three. Sounds like weird. There's a curve. We're on the play. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it. It's like our our awkward like one of bullets as its curve, which might be awkward, but Hopefully we're just going to like lands. This hand is just amazing. That's not lands. It's hoping they'd at least play a creature. Ooh, that's probably a better turn to play than Remorseful Clericus. Basic Island. So, Miracles or Combo? I think I'm gonna grab Sword of Fire and Ice. Oh, not Miracles. Alright. Also, not grabbing anything. So, like, Blue Red Delver? Basic Island Days decks are kind of few and far between. Blue Red Delver is probably the most likely candidate. In which case, we have, like, Plow. Like, Pro actually, just, like, Slamming Prowl is pretty good if you can get it down early. It does turn off my swords. Maybe just Prowl on one here. Does Slam right into another daze. I'm gonna like wait for my opponent to play a creature or something, so we can hopefully plow it into play Prelate after that. I've seen this guy on burn before. Yeah, I think Basic Island Days is just Blue Red Delver is the only thing that definitely sticks in my mind. There are like random decks, like sometimes you see. Oh man, I have six through that. I, I realized one second. I was like, oh no, hit F five. I missed out on exiling three of their cards. Against blue red, not a huge deal. So I guess sometimes they play a bad little marbler, but so I'm not going to plow this into a daze. I'm going to untap, and 
then plow. And then I guess I can... <coughs> Ugh. I'm sorry. I guess I can just keep playing around days here. It's also the only card I can cast after plowing, so... Um... Sword or GT? Sword or GT? I think with four lands, I'd rather have GT. I guess... Well, this deck doesn't really play True Name. GT is much better at gaining life, though. I'd grab GT. I want to play this Prelate on one as soon as possible. Because Prelate on one against Blue Red Delver is real good. I only get punished here if my opponent actually does slam True Name, but even then, we have several options to get around it. Hell, I guess by several, I mean one. But I guess Prelate on one also just kind of halts it. It's not like my opponent can attack with their True Name. So we sit at an awkward standstill for a bit. We jam Prelate on one, make our thing significantly less likely to die. Go get him, Sanctum Prelate. Force this, perhaps? It's gonna brainstorm in response, sure. <sighs> this thing just automatically goes on one in this matchup. Turns off a bunch of their bolts and cantrips and nonsense. We're at 20, they have four cards in hand. We're pretty well off. Tap their blue mana. Don't actually know which one I should tap there. I don't think it matters too much. Hope I don't get punished through that for f 6 through that remorseful cleric sack. They should have three less cards in the graveyard, exiling the brainstorm of the days in the scalding tarn. Next turn, I can just play equip GTA and smash. And they can't wasteland me off of that. They could trade. I think I'm okay offering the trade here. They have two cards left in hand. We like follow up with mom too. Because I could also just pass, right? And just get mob online. They're gonna daze. Alright, that's fine. I played this before because I wanted to see if they would daze. I don't want to get this mom dazed. So, like, this is totally fine. Now we just get the mom online instead. If I, like, play equip and then cast the mom post combat. Then they can just daze the mom. Which I don't love. Delver doesn't flip, which means they hit a land or a creature. So now we can just like GTA equip attack. 
they don't have enough. I just like pro-red the Sanctum Pearl and stuff. Wasn't 100% for trading anyway. Pearl is them probably. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't even sure if I like if I wanted to trade myself, but I'm happy to let them toss their days in the dumpster. So now I think we make an offer of some sort. So if they have, like, Snapcaster Mage, they can take this off the table, but at the cost of their entire board? Or, like, a two-drop removal spell, but I don't know what... Okay, they do have Snapcaster Mage, interesting. So I don't even have to mob this, though, is the thing. They just have to, like, quad block. Target days. Sure. We're just going to cast Stone Forge Mystic. So they just have to, they just have to quad block this. You just get to like, eat everything. Oh no, they don't have to quad block. But we still get to eat everything. Yeah, this is fine. Should have been Bolt. Should they have? I mean, we have Mom. Like, what are they gonna do? Bolt my face? Now oh, we're in the combat aimer step. Oops. There we go. Because days they could like uh, potentially counter a three drop here. I guess they could have like cast a brainstorm more relevantly. Than, uh, than dazing. Sure. It's their last card in hand. Another daze? No. Alright, they're dead. Grab Sword of Fire and Ice. Also, just kill this Delver. Oh, was the block bad, too? They had to block with, like, two power creature of both colors, or else they're just dead to the Mother of Friends, right? So that's the only block that does something. It's not like they're dying to a removal spell. Yeah, they're just dead anyway, it doesn't matter. Because we can't cast Swords of Blasters there. I think most of their decisions didn't really matter towards the end of there. Timecaster was interesting. I was, like, kind of not expecting it. I considered it, but... Ultimately, not really worth my consideration in terms of like we could still even if the absolute worst case is that they flash on Snapcaster, we can still beat them pretty handedly. Uh, anyway, I don't think this is a Chalice matchup. I don't love Chalice against like any of the Delver decks, especially when they have creatures outside of the CMC one, like Young Pyro, and possibly some like True Names or Bedlam Revelers or whatever they might have in this deck. What did I cut? Cut the Jailer. Could probably cut Recruiters. Ah, uh, no. Revoker first. Then Recruiter. Revoker sucks. This is a Chalice matchup. I'm not, I I need to figure out where I'm at with Chalice against Delver decks. Because this, this doesn't feel like a Chalice matchup. But like... I guess because they can blow it. Maybe... I mean, they can blow it up so I'm even less likely to have it. I like it more against Death Shadow because... In certain spots, it can actually be very, very, very good versus, I guess, this deck. Like, they're definitely going to have a Braids post board. So it's definitely not unanswerable, and it also turns off our multitude of, of good cards here. Board into Chalice when we have 14 one drops. We're also not cutting any of our mobs in this matchup because they're not boarding in Dread of Knights. Uh, I think I like this configuration. Tells weak against Grixis. 
but pretty good against blue, red, rug, and dust shadow. Eh, I don't think I would board it against rug. I think rug it's about as weak as, as it is against Grixis. Especially because they always have ancient grudges. Um, am I keeping this? Bad against Wasteland. Good against other stuff. Yeah, I'll keep. Ponder. Cast a Ponder. Damn it. Damn, they always play the threat. No flip deal. Probably just slamming Thalia this turn. No respect for the, the Triad Arbor. Uh oh. Yeah, well, that takes care of something eventually. We really want to slow down what they're doing. Because as soon as these Delvers flip, we're going to be taking a bunch of damage. It's a brainstorm to set up double Delver flip. Oh, just Spell Snare. Rude. Another. Another miss. Alright. We're doing it. <laughs> we have essentially gained six life this game. Source. We can actually do something with that. Um, so it's got to be some sort of removal, right? We could actually just prelate on one, right? That's actually that's not horrible. Prelate on one, violent stone forge. If you're gonna bluff file there. You do it 100% turn the attack. Ah, uh, the the, the vile bluff doesn't actually matter. Sometimes I just get the get the urge. I don't actually hate Prelate here. Turns off their bolts, and then we still have removal spells, violent wisps, and stuff. Yeah, let's jam Prelate. See if it resolves. We have Flicker Wisp plus Council Judgment to clean up these Delvers. My bluffing mechanics are weak. I, I actually thought about it too, but my my reasoning was if I had a mom in hand, I don't know that I would. I guess eh, no, I guess I would have traded it for a Delver. I didn't think about it super super deep, but I was like, eh, would I have traded it? Probably not. So I activated it and stuff. But in retrospect, I think I would have definitely tried to trade it for a Delver, but then they would have probably just bolted it before blocks. One. I've definitely made that trade before in my life. Violin, Mom to block an unflipped Delver. Maybe the Delver just won't flip again. Haha! -ha! We've gained 8 life this game. Ten life. <laughs> Jesus. Young Pyro. Actually, we've been 12 because they could, should have been able to attack here. I don't like that they have two mana up. I'm a little scared of a braid here. And I can't really play around it, but I really want to go get GTA and just jam. Poor, yeah, I am starting to feel bad for my opponent. <laughs> my opponent's fugitive wizards over here. Suppose I could use a Flicker Wisp to play around a removal spell. Hmm. 
I wonder if I'm actually supposed to do that. It just like takes so much out of their board. They'd have to block with a pyro and we kill both delvers and they just have two cards in hand. What are they gonna do with a single island? Yeah, they can't do anything. I think I am gonna go for that actually. Make an upkeep stop. Just activate Stoneforge, put in GTA, equip GTA to Sanctum Prelate and attack. If they block with Pyro, we just wipe their board and they have two cards in hand. Versus Stoneforge, Flickerwisp, GTA. If they have a braid here, I just have to cast the GTA and hope they don't have a daze to slow me down, but they'll only have one card in hand then, so. Yeah, they got nothing. So they can trade their entire board for this Sanctum Prelate. <laughs> yep. They can now abrade the GTA if they wish. Bolt the Flicker Wisp, sure. Seems like a pretty solid turn. Even if they have, like, true name, we still have this Council's Judgment. Two cards in hand. Snap bolt my stone forge, sure. Seems aggressive. Oh, well, they want to play around flicker wisp. They got like another bolt from my mom here. Still think activating, like, letting them go bolt stamp bolt by sacrificing that prelate was probably worth that finagling there. I wonder if they did have. That seems loose. Oh, so they're just trying to like top deck bolt or they're super, super dead, I guess. They don't have stifles, which is interesting. What's up all the time? Now we just use Stone Forge, that makes it easy. Could have baited Stifle with Pop Off. I mean, we just baited Stifle with uh, Rashadon Port activation, so that works out. Do we win this game yet? Eh, I think so. Kind of want Batter Skull in case they actually manage to kill all my stuff somehow. Yeah, why not? I can't have six anymore. I'm 
mean, isn't people falling for vile bluffs also just opponents being bad? I mean, I guess I'm just going to slowly... I actually don't want even to cast this vial. I want to be able to put in Batter Soul and protect it from a braid by being able to pick it up. Could, like, equip and attack, but we're just... This game is so far out of my opponent's reach already. I mean, the same logic applies to an end step uh, vial activation than a combat vial activation. If they're afraid of, if they have absolutely no other answers to a mom, they're like, oh crap, I can't beat a mom here. And they're looking at their stifle. Then, like, you're going to stifle it in an end step or you're going to stifle it in combat. Chooses not shuffle. They find something that can put up a fight. Another ponder, all right, deal. Chooses not to shuffle again. Find like a true name yet? Nope. Yeah, I'm just saying active mom is like equally very hard for, like, decks, decks like Delver. They just, like, don't want to let a mom go active if they can afford to. Hello. Well, my opponent's Delvers were never going to be six power flyers anyway. Or three, two, three power flyers, whatever. So we're leaving up three men here, that's why we didn't like port or anything, because we want to play around an braid on my batter school. Taking like the really long way around, but I think all loads all roads lead to Rome. <laughs> Notably we would be at like five right now. And we couldn't have just killed both Delvers with a GTA activation. Yes, this is why we left up three mana this whole time. Oh no, we got got! <laughs> Blown out by the second stifle. I've been had. Ah, yeah, well. They have no cards in hand. They're super dead. Oh, shit. I don't know if it's supposed to, like, Council's Judgment that's it. I don't want to tap really poorly if I am, but I don't think I am anyway. Just get the Snapcaster off the board. Sure. Damn it. I'm still on damage. Let's protect the mom. This way the mom can actually just attack and be not be afraid of bolts and stuff. That's one card. That one card is now one of their top three cards. We have Council's Judgment for, like, anything. So, even if they have True Name Nemesis, which is, like, the worst case scenario. Just Judgment it. Oh, wow. Their best of their top three was a Wasteland, huh? Alright, well, they're super dead. Got me. It's the perfect draw. Beat down time. 
think it's probably right to pump at least once there. My opponent will eventually find more shatters. I don't want to sit here looking like a fool with four counters on my GTA as it gets shattered. Hey, we found a thing. Look at that. Making the super mom. Mom is online. Nice Delver. Forked bolt my face. You got it, bud. Going out with going out with the fight, I guess. Oh man, we can't make Super Crusader. Battle Mom Online. Alright, beat down some Blue Red Delver. Let's go into the final round of the night. That matchup feels really good. Blue Red Delver matchups always felt pretty good as Death and Taxes. You just have so many tools that are good against them. The equipment package is very strong. And they don't get Ancient Grudge. They have like one for one shatters, like sh Smash Smithereens or whatever. Everyone says DNT is bad now. Do you think that's true? I think it's just, just as good as it's been for a long time. There was like a brief moment. Around the start of the death rate ban, where D and T was like legitimately one of the best decks, but right now it's just like it's fine. It's a viable legacy deck still. It's not like any better or worse than it's been for a decent chunk of uh, of legacy. If you know what you're doing, you can you you do very well with it. Hello, because it's it's a deck that very very much rewards your ability to play it. Pro Tour DNT. It was very good then. Everyone was on Death Shadow. That match was just very good. It was, it was right before everyone discovered that, like, you could still play Check Pile. You just cut, like, you cut the green and you just play more, more Grixis value stuff. As soon as people started playing Baleful Strix again, it got rougher. And I kept saying that, like, right as Death Ray got banned, I was like, alright, until... Like, there's probably still a Baleful Strix shell out there somewhere, but until people figure that out, Death and Taxes is going to be great. Eh, sounds fine. Burn? Suspend Roof Bolt. Alright, yep. Opponent putting their cards on the table. Well, we drew double Revoker, which is not great. Grim Lava Mancer, I guess. We have a bunch of really bad cards against Burn in our hand. We can, like, recruit a Stoneforge next turn.
this looks like an upgraded version of the last opponent's deck. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, I think I'm okay taking two here. Just get my Stoneforge online faster. We can just grab Stoneforge. We can file it in. C can you stop? Calm down, dude. Dang cat. So we take two here, but it means that we can, like, go get, um, like, GTA end, end of turn. I hate you so much, cat. I'm going to kick you out of this room in a second. So depending on what they do here, pop me for two. Seems really not worth it, but okay. It's because they have the Wasteland in play. That's all. That's part of the reason I played the Wasteland. Because we're going to be, like, tapping out a bunch. Wow, they're just... They know I have Stoneforge in my hand, right? And they're just tapping out? Saddest pop. That was a very sad pop. So now we just go get Gta to gain some life. I'm gonna leave this Violent 2 so I have a Revoker to try to be idle on. Oh man. Immediately punished. I'm supposed to attack with both there. Kind of want to use both counters to gain life, so. Unlikely. You like pop me again for four this time, but that's fine. Is it time for the BM for X Nervoker? Time to name Abandon Hope. Pop me again. Should have been for of progress. One life gain, why not do it while he's not in my life prevention? Uh, Legacy doesn't really play Skullcrack. And if my opponent's just, like, leaving up three mana, or leaving up two mana, I guess, they only get to prevent two life gain anyway, because I can just gain another two life on top of that. And I can always just use the counters for other stuff, too, like trying to kill them a turn earlier. So, not really gaining life unless I really want need to. Like if they have Lightning Bolt for this Revoker, for instance. We can just double pump. Oh, actually, then we get blown up pretty bad by Price of Progress, or by, uh... Whatever it's called, don't we? I guess we're at six, though, if they have Fire Blast. I wonder if it's worth it. Could just stay at six and essentially be at ten instead. Which I guess is the same as if they Fire Blast my Revoker, right? Because they could just Fire Blast my face. And if they Fire Blast right now, they're going down to one land and they're dying. Yeah, we're fine. Um, so they're at six. We're at six. Good night. Mm -hmm. I want to play around pop, but I want to like play around more. Eh, we have flicker, so I don't need to play around more cleric. So we'll just play around third price of progress here. Leave up this wasteland. Yeah, there's dead. 
So yeah, by not gaining life there, we just like got to deal them for free damage. I'm not certain that like bolting their revo my revoker was a solid line on their part, but it might have just been like, hey, okay, maybe they don't see the line, and maybe we like top deck a specific number of things, and maybe they get there. But I think we we're pretty solidly winning there. Anyway, game two. There's a chance I want third recruiter. Recruiter's really clunky, but it can find you your really good cards. Like right there, our hand our hand was very bad, but we got to just recruit Stoneforge, which is just the best card in this matchup. Jailer sucks. Um, Crusader kind of sucks. Spirit Keeper sucks. Cleric sucks. So we definitely want all these. Let's figure out. Revoker sucks. Could see cutting the ballista as the last cut. Do I want third re recruiter? Do I want to just submit like this? Ballista's pretty slow. Doesn't like all their creatures have two toughness, so. It's not really killing anything a lot of the time. It's good against Ensnaring Bridge if they have that, but we don't. They don't always have it, and also we we are already pretty decent against Ensnaring Bridge with Quad Wisp, uh, Relic Order, Double Council's Judgment. I think I'm fine with something like this. I don't know what I would cut for the, the fourth recruiter. So, I guess we just submit like that. Ooh, this is pretty good. Put them all into 6 2. Deal. Play Mom or Plow their guy into Chalice on one. Just keep telling me like it is. I guess we're playing Mom then. There's a chance I don't play this Chalice on two. On turn two, I mean, on one because I might want to plow something off the board. Oh yeah, we're definitely going to. Wait one turn on this chalice. Opponent is just very aggressively getting me. I almost want to keep my plow to gain life. But I think I don't want to give them the land. It's a mox all. Yeah, I guess we need to play mom into our chalice on one. Hope that's enough. We're at 11, so it's starting to get a little risky. Hopefully this chalice does something besides get shattered. Four lands definitely not doing it. I guess recruiting something is my plan. I just need to start gaining life. Look, just recruiting a stone forge here. I wonder if I can attack with a mom. Probably. Yeah, I'm gonna attack with one mom. So this vortex? Oh, this is just rift bolt in my face. All right. Get in range of like double fire blast and stuff. Nothing we can really do about that. <coughs> oh, 
Ugh. Don't have enough lands to like just jam this uh jam GTA. I'm gonna jam the GTA into play here. Because I want to be able to flicker out a flame, uh, a uh, sulfuric vortex if they play it. I'm gonna leave a wasteland to play around like a uh, pop, even though they shouldn't have it in their deck. Hoarding them on four lands is like pretty trivial. Any other shatters they can like just shatter if I do this on my turn anyway. We are dead to it. They have three cards in hand and four mana. We're dead to a non-zero amount of cards. Ooh. Can they can they do that? Does that work? If they target themselves? I guess it doesn't matter. Trigger. That doesn't look like it work. Works like that. They're dead. Hang on. I want to figure out if this works. Come back. Come back, opponent. No, opponent, come back. I wanted to read Chain Lightning. It doesn't, because it just gets countered, right? Yeah, then that player or permanence controller may pay red red if that player does. You may copy the spell and choose a new target. So yeah, the spell gets countered so you don't get to like pay the extra two. So they can't just target themselves with the Chain Lightning. It gets countered, but then they get to copy it because the copying is part of the resolution. Those, like the chain, those, the chain cycle is really weird. Wording wise. Pretty good run today. We got like pretty unlucky against our storm opponent and we like crushed a bunch of people. I guess we didn't crush the Eldrazi opponent, they were pretty tight games. Game two. Sweet. So we did. We went four one. Pretty good. Pretty happy with all of our matchups. We weren't in Cataclysm exactly zero times. We weren't in Chalice a lot too, right? I guess a lot is in twice, which is infinitely more times than we brought in Cataclysm. But I do think that. The third chalice is worth consideration, especially with the the influx of storm players. If you look at like the the most recent challenge results, there was a lot of storm. Chalice was definitely good there. I don't know what they had left in their hand, but there's definitely a chance the chalice saved us from death that game. Definitely made the difference of like five eight eight life to five life. But we don't know what my opponent's last two cards were. But yeah, Charles. Charles is a pretty strong addition, I think. I think a lot of people that aren't Ethos Sworn should probably be playing Chalices, because Chalice just feels really good. And a lot of the decks that Ethos Sworn is good against that Chalice isn't are not super common. The only thing that you're kind of missing is Sneak in that uh in that uh, juxtaposition of the two cards, but I think Chalice has enough other things that it's just better than can much better than Canonist right now. So yeah, long story short, play Chalice of the Void, and I might be having to pick up a third foil for myself. I guess, like, maybe. Maybe in future streams I'll try this. Something like that. It seems fine. Not Obviously not colossal differences, but also with three Chalices I need to reassess my stance on the on Chalice and the Grixis matchup. Because now we're bringing in, what, one, two, three, four, Four, five, six, seven, eight cards for Grixis. Cutting two revokers, four plows. But then you can only cut like two moms. Am I leaving in revokers and cutting all the moms? Am I keeping in two moms? A lot of questions. But anyway, figure that out another day. That's going to wrap up our stream tonight. Let's go find someone to host. See who's streaming tonight. Um, 
I'm the only person streaming Legacy right now. Alright. Modern? Where is everybody? Oh, hey, Death and Catmix is streaming. Who knows Death and Catmix? Death and Catmix is a cool, cool guy. He plays a lot of uh, Death and Taxes, primarily in Modern, but I've been talking to him and he is feeling the same sorrows that I am about Modern kind of being a shithole right now. So, he's been talking to me about legacy stuff. But anyway, we'll go host cat mix. And so, if you enjoyed the stream today, you want to see some more stuff, you want to support the channel, you can subscribe, comment, or comment. You can follow, subscribe, or donate. Follows are totally free. Help you know when I'm going live. Help other people find my content. Subscriptions get you a sweet Thali emote and Thraven themed subscription badge in the chat. And donations, I'd be more than happy to try out a list you want to see run through a league. Primarily death and taxes stuff. That's what I specialize in, so just hit me up. Other than that, you can subscribe to me on YouTube or follow me on Twitter. YouTube is where I post all my streams after they're live, so there's a ton of other footage to watch a bunch of DD matches there. As well as Twitter, where I post when I'm going live, paper results, all that stuff. Anyway, that is going to end our stream tonight. I will see you guys all tomorrow.